Ghana will generate about $6.6 .6 billion annually from lithium mining. This is when an Australian mining company, Atlantic Lithium Limited, starts production in 2026, which will create between 1,000 to 2,000 jobs in the central region. There is a treasure hidden in the ground amid the peaceful hills of Ghana's central region. It's lithium, not gold, cocoa, or oil, the typical suspects for Ghana's economy. You know, the white gold that drives the green energy revolution and our laptops and phones. Headlines sang about a multi-billion dollar windfall and a golden ticket that may change the country when this discovery was made public. It seemed almost too good to be true. What if it is, though? History frequently repeats itself, particularly in Africa, where abundant natural resources have frequently resulted in the terrible paradox known as the resource curse. Somehow, resource-rich countries become impoverished, their landscapes are destroyed, and their citizens are left with shattered promises. Therefore, Ghana faces a difficult question. Would the finding of lithium open up a new path to wealth or is it merely a different kind of trap? The story begins at a location known as Nwoya, which is scheduled to become the first lithium mine in Ghana. A sizable deposit has been found thanks to the project, which is led by the Australian business Atlantic Lithium. Over the course of its 12-year career, the project might bring in over $6 billion, according to a study. Over the course of the mine's existence, about 3.6 million tons of spodumane concentrate, the basic material containing lithium, are expected to be produced, making Ghana a new and significant source in the worldwide battery supply chain. The administration celebrated what appeared to be a significant victory when the agreement was originally revealed in October 2023. They had negotiated conditions that appeared to be better than previous mining agreements. A 13% direct interest in the project and a 10% royalty on revenue. On paper, it appeared great, as if Ghana had learned from its mistakes and was now prepared to profit from its mineral wealth for its own citizens. However, in the realm of natural resources and large money, things alter very immediately after the ink dries. In order to understand why this revelation is so dangerous, we must discuss the resource curse. Finding a lot of natural wealth is a strange phenomena that causes strife, corruption, and economic difficulties rather than a boom. Imagine winning the lotto and due to poor counsel and careless spending, becoming bankrupt a few years later. How does this occur then? A nation's currency may become artificially strong when it is suddenly inundated by foreign funds from the sale of a valued resource. As a result, everything else the nation produces such as food or textiles, is too costly for consumers in other nations to purchase. This is a classic example of Dutch disease, so termed because the Netherlands experienced the same phenomenon following the discovery of natural gas in the 1960s. However, it goes beyond geeky economics. Politics can be poisoned by the allure of easy money. Everyone fights for a piece of the pie, from international corporations to local elites which greatly encourages corruption. The government's priorities may change from creating a robust, diverse economy to merely managing the money supply. Ghana has previously watched this film. It has been one of Africa's leading producers of gold for more than a century. Nevertheless, a large number of the villages residing on top of that gold are still impoverished, their water and land contaminated by both legal and illicit mining or Galamsey, as it is known locally. There is an unpleasant perception that foreign corporations have gained the most from the enormous wealth extracted from the earth, leaving Ghana with a mess to clean up. Lithium is feared to be a follow-up. How can you avoid this curse, then? We must examine Botswana for a masterclass. It was among the world's poorest nations when it attained independence in 1966. They then discovered diamonds, it was a situation that could have gone horribly wrong. However, Botswana is now a stable, upper-middle-income nation that serves as an example of strong government in Africa. Botswana's achievement was the result of tough, astute decision-making, not magic. They first established robust, open institutions. 
In order to create a joint venture in which the government was an equal partner rather than only a tax collector, they engaged in intense negotiations with the mining giant De Beers. They received a direct portion of the earnings and a genuine seat at the table as a result. Second, they were prudent with their finances. A sovereign wealth fund, essentially a massive savings and investment account for the nation's future, received the proceeds from the sale of diamonds. This ensured that the prosperity would endure, prevented the economy from overheating. Thirdly, and perhaps most significantly, they made investments in their citizens. Roads, hospitals, and one of the continent's top educational institutions were constructed with diamond money. By transforming a limited resource into a healthy and educated populace, Botswana laid the groundwork for a future free from the need to extract sparkling rocks from the earth. The lesson is obvious. A resource discovery can be a blessing if the proper approach is taken. Whether Ghana has the political will to choose a similar course is the true question. This brings up Ghana's lithium agreement, which is currently at a crucial juncture. That historic October 2023 deal is already under jeopardy. Atlantic Lithium returned to the bargaining table in early 2025 after worldwide lithium prices had plummeted by more than 80% from their peak in 2022. The firm claimed that the Iwoya project was no longer economically feasible in the absence of concessions, such as lowering the royalty fee back to 5%. The Ghanaian government acknowledged in July 2025 that it had given the go-ahead to renegotiate the lease, which is currently pending finalization and parliamentary approval. Watchdog organizations were alarmed by this. They point out that this significant decision is being made in a policy vacuum because the National Green Minerals Policy, which is meant to direct these kinds of agreements, has not yet been fully published or put into effect. Critics challenged the entire rationale for the renegotiation, claiming the corporation had delays even prior to the price drop. In Ghana, this has sparked a heated discussion. There is pressure to start the project on one side. Farmers are unable to use their property while the mine is in limbo, so local authorities are concerned about delays. However, there is a serious concern that the administration may give away too much in a hurry to complete the deal, trapping the nation in a shoddy pact for decades. Adding value locally is a crucial component of Ghana's strategy, which includes building a refinery to convert raw lithium ore into more lucrative battery chemicals rather than just exporting it. However, that necessitates a significant investment, and the idea of a refinery becomes much more difficult to finance if the mining itself is less profitable. There are many obstacles in the way. The hazards to the environment are enormous. If lithium mining is not properly managed, it can contaminate local sources and require a lot of water. Open pit mining has the potential to harm agriculture and forests, that are essential to human survival. Local communities are already anxious about the project's actual expenses because they believe they haven't been adequately consulted. And there's always the risk of corruption. Ghana's problems with illicit gold mining demonstrate how easily things may go wrong when large sums of money are involved. It will need extraordinary institutional power to ensure that the lithium earnings is managed transparently and used for national development rather than stuffing private wallets. The strong public debate reveals a fundamental mistrust stemming from past failures, even if Parliament has not yet ratified the final contract. At last, Ghana is entering a worldwide market that is infamously unstable. The extreme volatility of lithium prices is a perfect illustration of how rapidly things can turn around. The lessons from Botswana about saving and diversifying are more important than ever because relying solely on one commodity to build your economic future is always risky. Ghana is at a turning point in its history, and the choices made now will have a lasting impact on future generations. What are your thoughts? Can Ghana transform this lithium into a true blessing and avoid the resource curse? Or will it take a well-known disastrous turn due to the demands of the international market and the temptation of fast money. Leave a comment below with your opinions.
The finding of lithium in Ghana is not a straightforward tale of financial success. It's a tale of opportunity and peril. There is a genuine chance to change the economy, generate employment, and construct a new industrial future. This mineral has the potential to propel both Ghana's ascent and the global green transformation. However, the resource curse casts a long, dark shadow. Negotiating a fair bargain in a volatile market, safeguarding the environment, making sure communities benefit, and creating institutions robust enough to fend against corruption are all daunting issues. Ghana is at a crossroads. The Botswana model, which carefully manages natural resources to create a just and affluent nation, is one route. The alternative route results in a tale we've seen far too often. Poverty and pollution are left behind after the riches is unearthed and taken away. Ghana's future lies not in the earth, but in the decisions taken today.